just a quick little, to think about, so we have some understanding of what teachers do in terms of the research literature and planning, but I find this example very illustrative. Uh, I have a sixth grade teacher who I work very closely with in Williamsburg, and she's a phenomenal teacher, uh, 20 years experience, always learning, always looking for new ideas, always looking for new things to try. And we met for coffee one day, and she was planning ahead to, um, she's taught 20 years. She's taught basically the US history up to Reconstruction for 20 years. And up and coming the next week was the 13 colonies. So, you know, you can imagine how many different ways she's tried to teach this. And, always in the front of her mind is the trifold brochure model of teaching the 13 colonies. So kids get in groups and, okay, you're going to Massachusetts Bay Colony, so we're going to develop a travel brochure to, to, you know, uh, to introduce that colony. And she just wanted to think through, you know, that, that type of activity or trading cards. She did all different kinds of things, but that kind of activity never really got the, quite the depth and level and engagement that she tried to do. So this was literally the conversation that we talked through in a napkin. So she said, okay, well, the first thing, one way that they could understand about the 13 colonies is just to read text. You know, I've got textbooks, we've got all kinds of other digital, non-digital materials in the classroom they could use, but that's not really enough. That's not really, I'm really thinking more in terms of research. I want them to do a synthesis, analysis, that kind of thing. So she said, well, you know, she's sort of an amateur historian herself. She said, wow, all the web archives that are available, that may be the perfect way for these students to research. But then thinking about her classroom context, the fact that she only had a couple days for this project, the fact that she would have to go check out the laptop cart, wheel it into the room, you know, so on and so forth, she said, you know, the archive may actually be too much. Maybe too much information. So what she did instead, she said, you know, I'm going to have the librarian pull a bunch of books. Because we're talking 13 colonies. This is not something that's necessarily, you know, cutting edge data here, right? So library books met her needs well in this case. The next thing she wanted them to do, she didn't want them to just answer questions. She was thinking about more of like a concept map to help them understand the different facets of the colonies. So that was sort of a given in her mind. And for her, a concept map meant inspiration. So for her, inspiration was worth it to wheel the laptop cart down to her classroom and set those up because they were dynamic, they could be shared, they could be archived, students could build on them from day to day. So that worked for her. That was sort of a quick, easy connection for her. But the last thing she was trying to think about, well, what's the culminating assessment? What's the culminating activity? And of course, they could have answered questions. Could have been sort of a traditional test. But she wasn't satisfied with the depth of that. So then she thought an exhibit might be the best way. Because we've, we've dealt with different facets of these different colonies, that might lend itself to some type of exhibit. So then in terms of technology, she's thinking through the different things she has available. And she'd done this similar kind of thing on a poster board before. You know, she felt like the kids didn't put a lot of effort into it. They weren't particularly engaged with that. So she had literally just a couple weeks before in a PD session, I think, encountered Glogster. And she thought, oh, great, multimedia kind of a poster format. But then as she was playing around with it herself to test it out, she realized that it wouldn't necessarily be able to capture all the knowledge and depth that the students have done through their research. So then what she ended up deciding was, a wiki is a good way to do that because students could collaboratively develop their wiki page uh, for, the, for the exhibit. They could still incorporate multimedia elements. She felt like that was just a natural fit. And so I thought this was a really interesting way, just literally in a coffee shop conversation, to get a window, at least into her mind, about how she planned. She thought about, she knew what she knew, wanted the students to understand, the different facets of the 13 colonies, and then she just walked through each of those steps. And she made the technology decisions after she had made the learning activity decisions.